Hello, and welcome to the online streaming of Olive Branch Baptist Church. We're glad you're tuning in with us today. As we prepare for worship together, we have just a few announcements. On October 9th, we're having baptisms. If you have questions about baptism or you would like to be baptized, please reach out to us and let us know. On October 16th, we're having a youth gathering at David and Angie's house at five o'clock. We are gonna have a sign-up sheet in the foyer. We're gonna do some fall stuff with pumpkins. And so we just wanna head count on who's gonna be there. So that's October 16th at Angie and David's. Also, the website has been updated. If you would like to share this around, feel free. It's obbcindiana.org. And our events are on there. Um, our ministries are on there. So we would love for you to check it out. Also, an important part of worship is prayer. So now comes a time where we look at our prayer list. We want to pray for the family of Steve Brown as he passed into eternity this week, and also the family of Daryl Hansel. And we also want to pray for the family of Rosalind Christner, who passed into eternity this week. We have some people on our prayer list that have been on there, and we continue to pray for them. Darlene Morton fell a couple weeks ago and had a total hip replacement, so we continue to pray for her and her return to function. Sam Dole is in the active military, and so we want to pray for him and also the other military members. One of Rod's friends, Roger Boone, continues to have health concerns, so we want to pray for him. Lynn Hillman did have a shoulder surgery this week, so we want to praise, lift up Lynn and just praise God that her surgery went well. We continue to pray for Greg Upchurch as he will be going on a mission trip to South Africa. He's leaving September 30th and this will be 11 days long. So we want to pray for Greg for his travels and just that him and his team can make a good impact as they're over in South Africa. Now we have several people on our list that we've been praying for for a while that have been battling cancer. We want to pray for Natalie Dickerson. We also continue to pray for Sam Copeland as he continues to have treatment for his cancer. We continue to pray for Jerry Chatham, Lewis Kelly, Bud Van, and Paula Turner, Turner, who all are undergoing cancer treatments. We added Dan Mangold to our list a few weeks ago. He's in kidney failure, and this week, in the last couple of weeks, he's been having tests done to see if he's going to qualify for a kidney transplant. It sounds like he's feeling pretty good, but we continue to want to pray for him during this time. Randy Dickerson continues to battle general health concerns. And we want to pray for Mary Lou Curlin as she is in the nursing home. We want to pray for Jim Kincaid and also Jane Myers as they continue to heal. Why don't you pray with me? Dear God, how cool it is to come together this morning um, virtually and in person. We want to specifically lift up our prayer list to you, Lord. For the family who lost loved ones this week, we just pray for them. We continue to pray for those who have had surgery and are healing, Darlene Morton and Lynn Hillman. We continue to pray for those in our community who battle cancer, Natalie, Sam, Jerry, Lewis, Bud, and Paula. We know that you know all of them intimately and we praise you for that. We continue to pray for Dan and Randy and Mary Lou, Jim and Jane, literally all the names on this list that you know them as more than names, Lord, but you know their hearts and you know the cries and the needs that they have. And we praise you forever for that. We ask that your spirit enters this broadcast, that it also is in this building today as we worship together for you. We love you and we praise you. It's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. If everybody will please stand. We're going to continue singing with 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like this. Before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let 
Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to. For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul Oh, my soul Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. And on that day, when my strength is faint, time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore forevermore bless the Lord oh my soul His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I will worship your holy We're going to sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. From through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground his 
his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever plug me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i stand here in the power of christ i stand doug would you please pray for us this is a written down, but we're going to talk about this today. But is anybody at any time when you watch this show figure out that they could build a radio, but they couldn't fix the hole in the side of that boat? <laughs> uh, just me. Uh, um, anyway, back to this. Um, ha have you ever seen those movies or television shows or plays? Or have you ever read a book? where a person or a group of people are either stranded on some deserted island um, or, or trapped in some situation, and, and, and there's drama and fear during the movie or during the book as to whether or not that person or those people are going to escape their situation. Are, are they going to be caught in those circumstances? Are they going to, to die in in those circumstances. But then, just when the reader or the viewer thinks all is lost, someone or some group of people suddenly show up, the, the good guys, right? And, and they come to the rescue of those people who are in peril. And when that happens, what, in, in most cases anyway, do, do those people who are being rescued from their situation say? We've been saved, right? Or, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving us. And there's a great elation among those people who were in danger, right? They're... They're celebrating. After all, just when they had all but lost hope in ever being rescued, suddenly someone showed up and saved them. It's pretty cool, right? So, as, as we, with that, as we do many times, uh, I'm going to start this morning with a question. And it, it's a question that you've heard a lot, and I've asked a lot, and, and, and to a degree we talked about maybe a month or so ago. And, and it's a very simple question. Are you saved? Are you saved? And we're going to look at that in several different angles this morning. But, but our first scripture passage begins to deal with that question. And it's found in the book of Titus in the New Testament. 
Uh, it's right after 2 Timothy, so you kind of flip back um, over there. Uh, in Titus, very small book. Um, and it's a letter that Paul wrote to a man named Titus uh, who had been traveling with Paul along with Timothy. Um, history says that after Paul was released from prison in Rome, he, he traveled to Asia. And as he, as, as he and his group passed the island of Crete, uh, in the Mediterranean, uh, Paul left Titus there to lead the church that Paul had established earlier, um, and then uh, that it was having some issues. And then later in that same trip, when Paul got to Ephesus, he left Timothy there to do the the same thing that he had left Titus to do on Crete. And uh, traditionally, First uh, and Second Timothy and Titus are three letters that are kind of paired together that Paul wrote to them answering questions that had arisen since Paul had left them to lead these churches. So you can kind of read 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus all kind of together in one part. But um, so today we're going to be in Titus. Uh, at least we're going to start there. And many of you have never really looked at the epistle to Titus, the letter to Titus, but it is, it is fascinating. And um, so we're going to start there in Titus chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 7. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can uh, turn there, or if you don't today, uh, the scripture will be up on the screen. Paul writes these words, remind the people to be, subject, uh, to, to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be disobedient, to be, ready, er, to be obedient, not disobedient, to be obedient, uh, dark up here, I'm going to have to get a coal miner's helmet or something, um, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always be gentle towards everyone. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, of God our Savior, appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on, uh, on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. So is the reading of God's word. Join me in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for all who are here. I ask a blessing upon those members of our church family who are ill this morning, not, not able to be here because of sickness, and just ask that you would heal them. Father, I ask that, that we would take these words today and, and not only allow us to um, enrich ourselves intellectually in our minds, but also spiritually in our hearts. Father, we are honored by your presence in this room today, and we ask these things in your son's name. Amen. So when I ask, are you saved? For most of us, the answer is pretty obvious, right? Well, of course I am. We, we talked about this, like I said, a month or so ago, right? And, and if that's you this morning, I, I hope that, that we shine even a little bit more light on that for you. And, and if it isn't you this morning, if you have questions or um, if you have things that you feel like you need to be answered, then, then as you grow toward a relationship with Christ, then, then I, hope this, I hope this helps because we're going to talk today about the issue of salvation, uh, not just in one way or two ways, but in three different ways. Um, salvation and saving and saved and save are all parts of the same original Greek word, right? But we need to know that in the original Greek, and I don't do this very much, but it's really interesting to me. In the original Greek, um, in, in the Bible, the, the, in the original text, the word saved is the same word they use for free. Salvation, the act of being saved, right? is interchangeable with the word freedom, the act of being set free. 
So in our opening story this morning, when those rescued people say we're saved, they might have also said we're free. You saved me. You have set me free. So it sounds different. But in my initial question, are you saved? I might also ask, are you free? Are you free? So let's look at all of this today. Again, like I said, in, 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 in three different ways, but they all mesh together. First, have you been saved? Past tense. When I ask, are you saved? You might answer by saying, yes, I was saved when I was 12 at church camp. Or I was saved when I was a teenager on a retreat. Or I was saved as an adult in a church service or a revival. Are you saved? Yes, I was. And I remember that. That day and that time and, and where I was. The day I was saved. I can tell you the day and the moment that I was saved. For me, it was Sunday morning, November the 9th, 1986. I was sitting five rows back on the right side of the left aisle at Switzerland Baptist Church. And at that moment, nearly 36 years ago, I felt God's call upon my heart and I was saved. But in reality, and like I said, we talked about this a few weeks ago, we were all saved, or at least we had the opportunity to accept salvation when Jesus took our sins to the cross for us. Remember that? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to, to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us to others. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him, Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God made Jesus who had no sin, who lived a sinless life. Not only did he put your sins on Jesus, it says literally Jesus became sin. He became your sin. And he took all that to the cross so that we might gain righteousness, so that we might become more holy, so that we might grow closer to God. He literally became our sin when he went to the cross. Why, again, Paul says, so that we might become the righteousness of God. Might. What's conditional there is our acceptance, not God's gift. So when someone says, are you saved? You can answer, I have been saved. Right? Because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, what Jesus did on the cross for you was set you free, save you, set you free from the penalties of sin, right? Jesus set us free. He saved us. So if you say, in the answer to my question, are you saved? And you say, I was saved. You are correct. But 
When I say, are you saved? You might also say, I am being saved. If the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is the central foundational moment of us being saved, of setting us free, then we move to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, where Paul again writes, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So what's the message of the cross that he talks about here in 1 Corinthians? It's that Jesus died as a sacrifice for us to pay the price for our sins so that we might be righteous enough to enter God's presence for eternity, right? That's the message of the cross. At that moment, for those who believed, we were saved. But what does Paul write here? It's that there are also people who hear the message of the cross and decide that it's all foolishness. That it's all absurd and it's crazy to believe that. They believe that that message is a lie. And because of that, Paul writes that they are perishing. They're on that deserted island. Or they're in that cave. Or they're in that dangerous situation. And no one is coming to help them. No one's coming to set them free. No one's coming to save them. But, thankfully, Paul continues his message here. Listen. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It's important to see that not only were we saved, but we're also currently being saved. It's an ongoing process. I heard once a great quote, it says, Satan has been defeated, but he hasn't been relocated. Right? Satan's been defeated, but he's still here. He's still attacking us. He's still attacking you. But our salvation not only fights off the temptations of Satan, but it also defeats them. So we have been saved. We have been set free from the penalties of our sins. But you're also being saved, being set free from the power of sin. Because Satan has been defeated, but he hasn't been relocated. He's still here. Just because we've been set free from sin's penalty doesn't mean that sin is no longer a powerful weapon that's used against us here in this world. And during all of it, there are people around us who think what we believe is foolishness. And they're perishing. But because we have salvation, on a daily basis we fight off temptation and we fight off sin and and we are in the process of being saved because we are protected from, we are separated from the power of the sin that exists around us. So you were saved. And you are being saved. And it's just as vital, maybe most vital, that you leave here this morning knowing with all your heart that by the grace of God, you also will be saved. 2 Timothy, Paul writes this, 
2 Timothy 1, chapter 1, verse 12. That is why I am suffering as I am, Paul writes. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. I know who I believe in. And I know I can trust him with everything. Paul writes, until that day. Now I have to confess something to you. I can barely read that verse without tearing up. In fact, I'm trying not to right now without getting emotional. Um, because it is so powerful to me to even think about that. To even believe that that was meant for me. Because for a big hunk of my early life, I never thought I was eligible for any of this. I never felt like I was qualified for any of this. I felt like it, this was for other people, not me. And here in this verse, Paul, like all of us, is sharing that he's been subjected to bad treatment. That there have been times in his life that he has suffered. He may have been hungry or he may have not had a place to stay or he may have been mistreated by those around him. Life was not a box of chocolates. But listen to what he writes. Yet Paul's not ashamed of his circumstances. Why? Why? Because Paul knows Jesus personally. Paul knows without a doubt in his heart or in his mind that Jesus is his Lord and he is his Savior. Jesus saved Paul. Jesus set Paul free. And listen, because Paul knows that now, Paul also knows that Jesus is able to protect him and guard him and fix those things around him, not only today, but Jesus can be trusted with all of Paul's life until that day. Until that day when Paul's earthly life ends and his eternity begins. That day. Jesus has full control over everything that Paul goes through. Paul was saved on that road to Damascus. Paul was being saved each day as those forces of evil around him, both in physical form and in spiritual form, attacked him. He kept the faith and he kept doing God's work. And here, Paul is also fully confident that at the end of his life, he will be saved. On that day when Paul draw, draws his final earthly breath, Paul has a faith that tells him that he will be saved. He will be set free. The sin that has existed around him will be vanquished. It will be eliminated because God cannot tolerate sin or be in the presence of sin. In our eternity with Him, not only will sin be defeated and sin be powerless, it won't even exist anymore. So, like Paul, each of us, you, stand to consider your own salvation. You stand and you consider your own freedom. Because you have been set, saved, you have been set free from the penalties of sin. You are being saved, you are being set free from the power of sin. And you will be saved 
you will be set free from the presence of sin. And I don't know about you, but that's very comforting to me. So when someone asks you, are you saved? Right? You can confidently answer yes in three different ways. I have been saved. I am being saved. And through God's grace, I will be saved. There's three answers to the same question. And you can also say, I have been set free. I am being set free. And someday I will be set free. And if that isn't you this morning, at least if it isn't you right now, I understand that. Because I lived a lot of years with a lot of questions. Then I hope and pray that all of this helps you see more clearly not only what God has done for you already, but also what He is continuing to do for you now. And perhaps more importantly, what God will do, you, will do for you later. What God will do for you in your eternity. I have been saved. I have been set free. The American Baptist pastor Martin Luther King Jr. stood one night and said, Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. You are being saved. You are being set free. And leave here today knowing that you will be saved. You will be set free. Are you saved? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I, I thank you for these words, Father. I, I, I thank you that, that uh, you allowed me to look at a book of Titus that I read but never really thought about a whole lot. Father, I, I, I thank you that you saved me from the penalty of sin through what you allowed your son to do for me. I thank you that you save me each and every moment of each and every day from the power of the sin that surrounds me. And Father, I, I, I thank you and I praise you that on my day, when I move from this earthly life into an eternal one, I will be saved, I will be set free from the presence of the sin that's around me. And Father, not only is that a promise for me, but it's a promise for each and every person who believes We're free. We're saved. Father, if there's somebody in this room today who never really felt like that, maybe they felt like I did for the first 25, 26 years of my life, help them to see that, that, that your gift is always open. No one is unqualified. Nobody's too old. Nobody's too bad. It's your desire that everyone come into an eternal relationship with you. Father, if, if somebody here today, if they need to make that decision, I, I'm, I ask that you would place a boldness in their heart that today would be the day that, that you would be glorified in their life. Father, if today's the day somebody just needs to get some things right, they they. They feel like they've moved away from you. They need to rededicate themselves to your work. And I ask that you speak to their hearts as well. And Father, maybe there's somebody who needs to join in the fellowship of this church that, that wants to officially be part of this family. If that's so, I ask, Father, that you would... Uh, Speak very clearly to them at this time, too. And finally, Father, maybe there are people that just need to pray. 
sometimes we talk about praying and we, we, we get too busy to pray. We get too busy to have those conversations and, and we carry around these burdens and we think, oh, I, I don't need to bother God with that. I can handle it. Help us to see, Father, that you don't want us to handle it. You want us to hand it over. Father, there's going to be some people standing around this room in just a minute that, that are available to pray with people and pray for people. I'll be here in front, or maybe people need to come and, and just come to the altar and just leave those burdens here. Whatever it is, Father, I ask that you would uh, speak very clearly to our hearts. And after we hear you, Father, we would respond to you. Father, we love you. And we ask these things in your son's name and for his sake. Amen. I'm going to ask some members of our uh, prayer team to stand. Uh, Doug's over there. Doug's there. Am I off? No, I'm on. All right. Uh, uh, Greg, would you stand? And Tom, would you stand as well? If, if, people, yeah, if people need somebody to pray with. Um, we're going to sing our hymn of invitation. I invite everybody to stand now. And if the Lord is speaking to your heart, won't you please come? Jesus paid it all. <laughs> I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power in thine alone can change the leper's spots. And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow And when before the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen, amen. Do you know when you want to put a th the tent up? Friday afternoon, she said. Okay. Um, Lexi and George are getting married here next Saturday, and the reception is going to be at Marsh and Mary Ann's um, at, following the wedding. We're going to take the tents out and set those up on Friday afternoon. Uh, if anybody is available to do that, let us know um, so we can get those out there and get those set up. Um, lots of things going on this week. Uh, don't forget to continue to pray for each other. Um, and introduce yourself to each other. Uh, there's a lot. There's always new folks here each day, uh, each week, and and we're blessed by that. And and uh, if uh, you don't know somebody, uh, uh, like we always say, give some hugs and some handshakes, and let people know that you're glad that they're here. I'm going to ask Chase if he would close in a word of prayer, and then we'll sing our doxology, and you're dismissed. Amen. Let's sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. 
Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Have a great week.